After you think of an invention, your first question you'll have is, how much does it cost to get a utility patent? And the overall cost could be as high as $40,000, or it could be as low as ten dollars to $15,000. And you must be thinking, as low as ten dollars to $15,000? That's still very expensive. But the real question behind this question is, how can you afford to get a patent? I'm here to tell you, yes, you can afford to get a patent, but you have to manage your costs. And you do that by paying at the start of the process only for reserving the right to get a patent later on so that if and when your marketing shows your invention can be profitable, you can spend the necessary money at that time to get the patent. This strategy makes the patent process much more affordable. You're not spending $40,000 up front when launching your product. You're just spending the money in the beginning to reserve the right to get a patent. And I'll be weaving this strategy into our discussion about patent costs, so watch till the end of the video. The first expense that you're going to incur is a novelty search, and that goes by many different names. We call it a patent search, a patentability search, or a knockout search. That search will cost you between $600 to $4,000 depending on who you hire. To illustrate what you're getting for your money, I want to tell you what I drove as my first car. And it's an Aries K car. It's not a Lamborghini, but they're both cars, right? But I think you get the point. The difference in cost is about the difference in quality. If you spend more, in general, it's not always true, but in general, if you spend more, you're going to get someone who's going to spend more time on it and search deeper than they would for $600. And in my opinion, the novelty search is one of the most important steps because it tells you not only whether you should incur the expenses for the patent process, but in many cases, it's going to tell you whether or not you should launch your product. And that means whether you'll be spending all of your nights and weekends and your, all of your effort after work on your product launch. For a good, decent patentability search, you should expect to spend about one to $2,000. But before you spend that money, I strongly suggest you do an informal one yourself to manage your patent costs. And if you find something that knocks out your idea, guess what? That's a great thing because you just saved yourself a ton of money because you didn't have to hire a patent attorney like me to do a formal search for you. And here's how you can do a patent search yourself. You go to Google Patents and do some keyword searching. If you really want to do the patent search right and get into it, then you should follow the seven step patent search strategy. And that's how the patent office trains its examiners on how to do their patent search when they examine your application. So if you follow the seven step patent search strategy, you're going to be mimicking what the patent office does when they examine your application. Now let's say after the patent search, you find that you can get a patent on your idea or invention. The next step would be a patent application. And the patent application will cost you about $8,000 to $25,000. And it just depends on how much information you want to put in. If you want to protect just the point of novelty, some options and variations, or just basically how your idea works, then it's going to be about eight to twelve thousand dollars for a mechanical invention, and about eight to fifteen thousand dollars for an electrical or software invention. Now, if you want to get a patent cheaper, you can certainly do so. There's a lot of websites that advertise cheap patent applications. But just remember the Aries K and the Lambo comparison I made. Another thing you might be asking yourself is whether the provisional and the non-provisional application cost the same. And no, the provisional application is cheaper. However, it isn't cheaper by much. And here's why. You still have to describe how to make and use the invention in both the PPA or the provisional patent application and the non-provisional application to the same extent. And that's what takes the most amount of time in preparing your application. It's true the provisional is informal compared to a non-provisional application, but the reduced requirements don't add up to thousands and thousands of dollars. Most patent attorneys that post videos publish their dirt cheap rates are just trying to convince you that a cheap provisional is a way to go just to make it sound affordable. However, that simply isn't the case if you do it right. Based on my experience, all things being equal, the provisional patent application should cost you about 20% less than a non-provisional, but not 50% or more. The patent office describes the provisional as a cheaper alternative, 
But cheaper doesn't mean cheap. Just like Tesla is cheaper than a Bugatti. Now, if you prepared a well-written provisional patent application, when it comes to filing the non-provisional application, the cost of the non-provisional shouldn't be that much. All you're paying for is the computerized drawings, the government fee, and the full claim set. And that should be about two to $3,000. So let's say you go with the provisional application. It will cost you about six to $9,000 to file that application for a mechanical-based invention. Now, when you go to file the non-provisional application, it shouldn't cost you another six to $9,000 because you already put that information in there, the options, the variations, the point of novelty, into the provisional. All that it should cost you is two to $3,000. So whether you file the provisional patent application first or you go straight to the non-provisional, the cost at the end to get the non-provisional on file is about the same. Let's say, James, I believe you. Now, which one should I file first, the provisional or the non-provisional? And here's the simple answer. If you don't know which one to file first, file the provisional because you can always change your mind and file the non-provisional even the day after you file your provisional. But that's not true with the non-provisional. Once you file the non-provisional application, you can't convert it back to a provisional application. The other reason you want to file a provisional first is that you'll be able to delay the other costs associated with the patent process for about one year. This goes to affordability of the patent. When you delay costs, it makes expensive things more affordable, just like a mortgage makes a home more affordable. The provisional gives you more time to market your product. Hopefully you can make money to pay yourself and pay for the downstream patent costs. Once again, you make the patent process more affordable by using the profit from your business and not your own money. So even though the total cost to get a patent is very high, the patent process is affordable. You just need to know how to manage those costs. Let me say it again. A patent is affordable. In the beginning of your product launch, you're just reserving the right to get a patent so that later on, if and when your product is successful, you can spend the money needed to get the patent. After you file the patent application, the next step is the examination. This is where the patent office has worked through its backlog of applications and has finally come to your application. They pick it up, they read your description of the invention, they examine it to see if it's a novel and non-obvious invention, then they send you an office action. Most likely it's a list of reasons rejecting your application for patent. And you must be asking yourself, I thought we just did a patent search and we cleared that hurdle. Shouldn't that first office action be a notice of allowance? Well, no. First, no search is perfect. So it's important that you find an attorney that will do a class subclass search, which mimics how the patent office will be searching for your invention. This process comes the closest to what the patent office will do, and it minimizes the false positives you'll get. Next, this is just how examiners work. They piece together multiple prior art references to reject your patent application. Each time you get an office action, a response has to be filed. That response will cost you about one to $5,000, depending on how strong you want your arguments to be. You go through about two to three cycles. I tell inventors to budget around five to $10,000 for the examination stage. One of the best ways to present the strongest arguments and also reduce the cost is to interview the examiner. And I normally get on a call with the examiner and the inventor. We discuss the merits of the invention. Generally, this will cost you more than filing just a written response, but I think it's well worth it. Because when you do the interview, you can ask the examiner questions and he'll provide you instant feedback. So overall, in the long run, it's going to cost you a lot less. If you're ultimately successful in convincing the examiner to grant you your patent, you have to pay an issue fee, which will cost about one to $2,000, depending on your entity size. And you have to pay three maintenance fees at three and a half, seven and a half, and 11 and a half years after the patent grants. These maintenance fees will range between one to $3,000, but the goal is to have the profits from your product pay for these expenses. If you want to learn more about the patent process, subscribe to my channel.